Hello sculptors, welcome to learning how to sculpt Nivola horses. So in your kits, you're gonna see the following. You will see some air dry clay. This does not need to be put in the oven. It will just dry over time, over a few days to a week in your home. Um, you might have received either this light cream white color or this darker gray color. They work exactly the same. We just have two different clays. They are both beautiful and you can use that color in your final design. So you have your clay. Remember that they are in airtight bags because this is air dry clay. So when you're not using it, you want to make sure any extra clay is kept airtight and secured away. I like to roll it up like this so that it's really safe. The next things in your kit for sculpting. This is what's called a potter's knife or a wooden tool. It has a flat edge. Sometimes because they're brand new, it's a little bit sharp here, so be careful. And then they have a rounded edge here, which we'll use for shaping and adding patterns and design. Next in your kit, we have for our decorating, we have a brush and we have our three primary colors. We have yellow, red, and blue. So with these three colors, you can make practically any color you want. Um, if you maybe use a paper plate or something to mix colors, but you have those three colors. We'll get to that in the decoration portion of the video. And then some things that you might want to add from your kitchen. I have a little container with water. In the bottom, I have a uh, paper towel. The paper towel is just so that I can dab my fingers. I even could use a little less water than this. Sometimes, instead of a paper towel, I have a little sponge, so if you have that at home, you can do that. I like to keep it at the bottom there. It soaks up all the water, and then to get my fingers wet, I just dab it, and now my fingers are wet and nice and smooth. As you can see, the horse is divided up into three parts. So let's divide your clay. We're going to take your block of clay, and we'll divide it in thirds. One third for the body, one third for the head, and the last third for all the extras, the tail, the feet, and maybe anything else you want to add. Now, if you take those three pieces, you can even see how the horse can be built with the three parts. Take your extra clay, put it in your Ziploc bag, and seal it so that it doesn't dry out. Now let's work on the body of the horse. You have your first third of clay. I'm on a canvas board, but you can use a clean countertop. I also have my wet paper towel and my wood knife. So what we're gonna do is that the body actually looks kind of like a bean. So we're going to take our square block and let's round off the edges. I'm going to roll it on the table. I'm gonna press it in from the sides because I don't want a long coil and smooth out any lines that might appear. So keep rolling it, smooth out those edges until you get an oval shape kind of like a log. Now if you look at the body, it goes up a bit in the rear and down at the chest cavity. So let's make that swoosh and movement. I'm just going to pull this part up and press this part down. And I'll repeat that on both sides just to make sure that I'm even, and there you get the shape. Now let's look at the back of the horse. Horses have very strong back legs so they can run fast. So I'm gonna take the thin part of my wooden tool and just press it in to create the delineation of the leg muscles and the rear. We will add the legs themselves later, but right now we're just creating that strong leg muscle. Now, if you look at the front of the horse, it's really quite triangular. So we are going to take our block of clay, turn it to the front, and really just press the clay upwards so that you create that rounded triangular top for the neck, smooth out the bottom, smooth out the front, and then we are done with the body of the horse. So now we're gonna start the head. You're going to take your second third of clay, and we're going to do what we did before. We're going to round out the edges, so give it a little bit of a roll, and then even roll out the top so that it rounds it off. You don't have to worry about the bottom because that's where we are going to attach it to the body. So here's the basic shape of your head. You have the neck, you have the bottom. It is thinner on either side, kind of like an oval. So I'm going to take some wet fingers and just sort of press it together. I, want, I don't want to make it too skinny, but I just want to bring it in because that's the front of the neck. Then I'm going to focus on where the mane is. I'm going to get my fingers wet and I'm just gliding my fingers along down where the hair would go to give me a basis 
to create the mane for later. I'll take my wooden tool and begin to press it in to create the formation of the face. I'm not doing any detail, I'm just marking where the face is, giving some shape and dimension, and creating that head so you really have a visual of where the head, the neck, and then the mane is. So now let's work on the mane. Take your two wet fingers, do a slight pinch and glide as you pull the mane up and over, just like that, up and over, and it'll create the mohawk that is on top of the head. You can smooth out any rough edges, any globs of clay that happen. You can even take the thinner part of your tool and really help shape that mohawk to be exactly how you want it. So there's the mane. Now let's finish off the face. We've already marked it, so now I'm going to take my tool, and the face is actually pretty flat, so I'm going to dig this a little bit deeper to show the chin and the jawline, and then I'm going to take the flat part of my tool and flatten out the front of the face, pinch it into a triangle, shape it a little bit more, and from the side, you can now see the front of the horse. Now let's work on the feet and tail. You take it, you're going to take your third portion of clay, and we won't need all of it. We're going to take some small pieces, two for the front legs, two for the back legs. Now the back legs are a little bit bigger than the front, so you need a little less clay for the two front legs, and you can always adjust later. Now you have your four pieces of clay for the legs, and you're going to do the same that you did for the body. You're going to roll them on the table or roll them in your hand to make them like four little logs and use your fingers to smooth out any cracks or creases that happen. Now you have your four pieces, and we're going to take an extra little piece for the tail. You're going to make a round rectangle, kind of flat. Okay, now let's take your pieces, your four legs and your tail, and let's shape them before we attach them. Now, the back legs of a horse are very, very important. So let's give them some definition. We're going to pinch the bottom part together, kind of like a triangle to form the hoof. We're going to do it on both feet so that they're symmetrical. Then we're going to take our flat side of our wood tool and press it in to create that heel. If you look on the horse, you can see the definition of that heel in a very simplified form. So there it is. And we'll do that on both hoofs. Now let's begin to attach the hind legs. Make sure you know which direction the hoofs are going. Make sure that they fit size-wise. And now we're going to do what's called scoring and slipping. Scoring is the process of roughing up the surface by making X's or hashtags on both the body and where the foot will connect. It's always where the two pieces connect. Then adding a dab of water, pressing it into the body, and smoothing out the seams so that it looks like the legs are going right out of the rear. Go all the way around. Make sure that all the seams disappear and straighten out anything that might have happened. You can even use your wood tool if your finger can't reach and reshape anything that you might have lost. You can even add a little bit more clay around the inside of the seam to really build up that muscle. And we're going to repeat this for the second leg. Remember to score and slip, add some water, attach the leg, press it in and smooth out those seams. Definitely use your thin part of your wooden tool, the softer side, to get into all the crevices to make sure that everything is secured. And always do a last look to make sure that the legs are even and that the horse would be able to stand up and not fall over. Now that you've attached the back legs, we're going to attach the front legs. These are much simpler in shape and in attachment. 
just round out your edges. I like to flatten the top to give it a bigger surface area to attach. Remember to score and slip, so scratch it up, add a little bit of water to the top of the legs and to where they're going to attach. Press them in. Make sure they're lined up and that your horse is standing straight and then smooth out those seams. And again, remember you can always use your tool to get into places that your fingers cannot reach. The last small attachment is of course the tail. So take your small piece of clay that you set aside, smooth it out, make it the right shape, and of course figure out where you want to put it. Do your scoring and slipping as you do for every time you attach. Stick the tail on, use your wooden tool to smooth out those thin edges, and even maybe get your fingers wet and do a little bit of the pinch and pull like you did on the mane, just to make it look like it really is growing out of the horse. Now we're getting to the end and it is time to attach the head. So something to notice about these horses is that the head is actually about half of the length of the body. So I'm going to remeasure my head and I'm going to trim it down. So right now my head is about the same length as the body. I'm going to mark where I want to cut it off and I'm going to cut it off on an angle because I want it to really press down into the body. So I'm going to use my wooden tool and just begin to cut off that excess clay that I can use later for another fun project. So that looks like it's about right. And just as I'm going to attach everything, I'm going to figure out where I want, shape it a little bit to make sure that it fits. Press it in. That looks like a really great fit. And then, like always, every time you attach pieces, you score and slip. So I'm gonna score the body, and I'm gonna score the connection where the head or neck will go. I'm going to add some water. And then I'm gonna press it on. And before I begin to smooth everything out, I make sure that I'm straight, that it's not tilting, that I didn't put it on crooked, anything that can happen when you're attaching pieces. That looks good. I'm going to turn it around. My head was tilted a little bit. Always look at your work from all angles because you never know what can happen. So now I'm pleased and I'm going to start smoothing out my seams. There are no seams for these horses. Everything blends smoothly from one piece to another. So I'm going to take my finger, sometimes I'm going to get it wet, and really blend those seams. Make sure it's attached and so that it can never come off. Really make sure on those back joints where it's a little bit harder that you really blend it. If air gets in, it can end up cracking and then your head can come off later. Use the tool whenever you need to to get into those small crevices where your fingers can't reach. Now for some of my more advanced students or older students or just ones that want a little bit of a challenge, detail work is some of the more fun stuff to do and really adds a lot to your pieces. So if you look at the horses, there's a lot of muscles that are shown in the horse body. So I've just added a few extra pieces that I'm going to smooth in to show some of the muscles that are in this horse structure. I've added it above each leg and even in the bottom chest cavity. And if you look at the actual horses, you'll see those bulges of muscle there as well. Always remember to smooth everything in so that it doesn't look like you just added a piece of clay, but that it's an actual muscle. Okay, now let's take your wooden tool and let's do some mark making. These tools are not only used for cutting, but they're also used for making shapes 
and doing mark making. So take the softer end and just press it in to where the eyes would go. It's a simple mark. Press it in, make that oval, and the eyes will appear. You can also, since your clay is soft, sometimes when you're handling you lose some detail, you can go over your mohawk of the mane allowing for a cleaner surface to add the ears. Now the ears are really two tiny little balls that you roll up between your fingers, really small, and you just press them on to either side of the mane. Make sure they're even. And then use your tool to press them in and give them that inside definition of the ear. And there is your Novola horse. Congratulations! Okay sculptors, this is one of my favorite parts. It's the painting or the surface design. So the original horses, even though in the playground they were gray, they are currently gray, they used to be red blue, or yellow. So I chose one of my favorite colors as the base coat. I'm going to give it a completely full body of red. Then I'm going to let this dry for about five minutes. Now you could stop right there and leave it just one color, or you can use the other colors in your kit and have some fun. Remember to wait about five minutes or until it is dry to touch and then start on your designs. I've recently been inspired by all the beautiful flowers and in Central Park and in the different parks around the neighborhood, so I thought I would cover my horse in flowers. I'm starting with blue flowers with a yellow center, and then I'm going to add some yellow flowers, and then I mixed red and yellow together to make orange, to do an orange inside. But you can really do whatever you want. You can do stripes or polka dots or butterflies or you can do it just the way that I did it. And also remember, you can always just leave it its beautiful base color.